Let me go ahead and get started on the, on the this is AP Lit, and we're looking at uh, vocabulary, I mean, we're looking at poetry, yes. Uh, this is the question for 19 through 23. You oh, sorry, the first sorry. Jeez, I did, man. You're having class. Come on, man. So just keep them. Keep them. Uh, all right. The uh, only difference I'm going to ask you to read it, read it closely, and uh, and write on it. It's kind of my point earlier. Even grading my papers, I have to write on the paper. Because I, that's the only way I can, after I've read it, I can put my thoughts together. I don't know how you could ever read anything without writing in it. Huck Finn reads even more because it's a bigger book. So uh, that, that's a, my encouragement to you to write on it. Um, this is a, well, a poem. Billy Collins is a modern writer. I've heard of him. I've never read anything else. The lanyard. You know what a lanyard is. Everybody knows what a lanyard is. That thing you hang around your neck and you can put a key. Or, that's a lanyard, right? <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to read it to you. And normally I ask you to read it. The reason I'm going to read it to you is because you need to hear it. Even when you read it to yourself, you need to hear it. You know what I mean? You need to read it, not like outwardly, but inwardly. You need to hear the, the, the words. And I think that's a part of it that you probably miss you, you got to develop that ability to read it silently and out loud at the same time. So let me read it to you. <clears throat> um, don't forget the, the five or six questions that you start off with and even looking at it. Just glancing over it will tell you something about it doesn't give you a date, but it, to me it automatically should tell you that this is more modern. Um, because of the format, the structure of the poem. Let me read it. <clears throat> the other day I was ricocheting slowly off the blue walls of this room, moving as if underwater from typewriter to piano, from bookshelf to an envelope lying on the floor, when I found myself in the L section of the dictionary where my eyes fell upon the word lanyard. No cookie nibbled by a French novelist could send one into the past more suddenly a past where I sat at a workbench at a camp by a deep Adirondack lake, learning how to braid long, thin plastic strips into a lanyard, a gift from my mother. I had never seen anyone use a lanyard or wear one, if that's what you did with them, but that did not keep me from crossing strand over strand again and again until I had made a boxy red and white lanyard for my mother. She gave me life and milk from her breast, and I gave her a lanyard. She nursed me in many a sick room, lifted spoons of medicine to my lips, laid cold face cloths on my forehead, and then led me out into the airy light and taught me to walk and swim, and I, in turn, presented her with a lanyard. Here are thousands of meals, she said, and here is clothing and a good education. And here is your lanyard, I replied, which I made with a little help from my counselor. Here is a breathing body and a beating heart, strong legs, bones, and teeth, and two clear eyes to read the world, she whispered. And here, I said, the lanyard I made is the lanyard I made at camp. And here, I wish to say to her now, is a smaller gift, not the worn truth that you can never repay your mother, but the rueful admission that when she took the two-tone lanyard from my hand, I was as sure as a boy could be that this useless, worthless thing I wove out of boredom would be enough to make us even. All right, you may want to read it again, mark on it, anything that you can find, diction, structure, Syntax, which is sentence structure. Some of you just said it was structure. It's specifically sentence structure, how sentences are put together.
Okay. All right. Let's take a look at this. Um, just again, um, I actually saw a couple of people use the acronym LEAD, L E A D, or LED, L E A D, um, which means, you know, low, elevated, abstract, concrete, denotation, connotation. And then in the back of this, this is a, to me a very unhelpful acronym. T P C A S T T. That that doesn't the acronym doesn't help me, but the idea of of um, shifts does. That's really the new new thing that this brings up. So think of the idea of shifts and sentence structure. Uh, shifts. Oh, All right. So why don't we start with uh, somebody? Get us started. That's how you start for us. What did you notice about it? Um, like in the first uh, stanza, when it keeps on repeating, like um, from the typewriter to the piano, from the bookshelf to the, like the envelope, it keeps on repeating, like to and from. It um, it makes like the sentence of this feel like um, he's ricocheting around. So what do you mean he's ricocheting around? Like the way the way he uses those words. But what does it mean to ricochet around? Between what things? It can. What? What is he going back and forth from? Well, you said. Did you say it earlier? I just wanted you to repeat uh, that. Like typewriter, piano, bookshelves. Okay. So, how does what does that describe about his state of mind here at the beginning? What's he doing? What process is he doing? Got a typewriter, bookshelf, dictionary. That tells you one thing right there. The guy's a poet. <laughs> right? What does he do? He's right. Um, but what's going on with it? What's, what, how, what's this state of mind? Since you brought it up, I'll just let you finish. Yeah. He's out of focus. He's not. Yeah, he's not paying really attention to what he's doing. He can't get. Focus. Um, all right, let's go on from there. Uh, Madison, what do you got? Um, I thought it was kind of low vision because it's like easy to understand. It's more yeah. straightforward. Yeah. And that's, again, that's very useful if we can take it to the next level. If you can figure out why is the low diction useful? Why is the low diction helpful? What does it reveal? One person on the exam mentioned Red Badge of Courage, and that was our best example of the low diction of the soldiers versus the high diction of the speaker, that was pretty clear. Um, so yes, you're right, it is very conversational. Um, we, we, need to, we need to ask ourselves, what does that add to meaning? Yes. What is the Red Badge of Courage? Remember we read just the first page of the Red Badge of Courage. Oh, when it's it, like when the really have, low diction contrasted oh, with the, right. the like, yeah, high diction. Yeah, I, um, uh, John, I uh, gave it as an example of how, what you look for when you look for diction, and we, that was a good one because we, we, we saw that contrast between the speaker, that, that's the speaker's low, high diction versus the character's low diction. And that was useful because the diction revealed education level, um, even, even part of the country because it had dialect in there. Yes. Like, I think that's what Madison, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but she said it was helpful because even though he's a, he's a poet, he's a modern poet, and yeah, it, it's a conversation that he's having with us. That, that can be very, very useful. Elizabeth, what would you add to this? Um, so the lanyard is diminished, it is, is that the right word, is diminishing, and the mother is increasing. 
And that's actually the purpose of the poem. If you did you see that? That is the actual theme of the poem. So you're on to the structure. Now we got to figure out what what is he getting at, um, Davis? What is he getting at? She pointed out. It's not called my mother. It's called the landing. Um, but the end of the poem seems to be much more about the mother than the landing. Um, well, he keeps repeat, or he keeps telling all these things that like his mother did for him, and then he says he basically makes it seem like the only thing he did for her was give her this lanyard. Yes. Um, but that that was enough to pay her back for all the things that she did. Uh, not not because it was a lanyard, but like because he made it, and that made it important and gave it value. Well, good. Um, I, I would just play the devil's advocate and say, does he think it was enough to pay her back? And do you, as a reader, think it was enough to pay his mother back? No. The answer, I think it pretty clearly no. Why do you say that? Because, I mean, if you're thinking like literally, it's just like the small little like lanyard for a life of like, you know, looking over someone and providing for them. And so obviously, it's not. Exactly. And, but the thing, you look at at the end, he says, Look at the very last three lines. I was sure as a boy could be that this useless, worthless thing I wove out of boredom would be enough to make us even. That tells you a lot. What is he saying? He says, I was sure as a boy. What is he sure of now? What you just said, Ethan. Yeah. He, he, he was sure of that as a boy, but what is he sure of now? Now, he um, isn't so sure that it is that either. And so the fact that he thought that was enough when he was a boy, what does he think now about himself as a boy? Um, how he was kind of naive. Yeah. And he didn't have as much knowledge. Right. Um, John, why doesn't he just thank the mother now? He can make up for it, right? Well, it seems like he's losing the ego in this poem. He's, he's saying that now he's com being completely humbled. But what's... Uh, I mean, she could have, like, died. She might, it might not be possible. Yeah, it might not be possible for him to do that. That's what makes it... Um, so how would, how would uh, maybe Julia can... How would you describe the way he makes that point? That, the point being that he thought that the lanyard could make up or make even for all his mother had done for him. What, how does he, and sort of bringing together what we've already said, how does he make that point? Um, like what are the what are the devices? They're gonna ask you that, you have to explain the devices. It doesn't have to be any fancy Greek word or literary term, but how would you describe the devices he used? I guess he kind of just uses a repetition. Yes. Because he repeats yes. lanyard a lot. He keeps repeating, like, with the things his mom has done for him, and he's like, no, he keeps repeating that. So what, what happens every time he mentions, and I gave her a lanyard, I gave her a lanyard? What? What's wrong? Yes. It takes on more meaning in, by, by being less... You know, he's making the point. I gave her a lantern. I thought this was good enough. So every time he repeats it, it as you say, it takes on less value. That lanyard is diminishing as he thinks about what his mother has given him. And so she used the word repetition. What's another simple way to describe? It? Have, it's not a fancy Greek word, but what has he done in the poem? Lanyard, mother, lanyard. What's he doing with those two things? What? Like comparison. Exactly. Same. Comparison. Contrasting. Yeah. Well. Or I like the word juxtaposition. If you want to really, he, you juxt really, he juxtaposes all of these things, that's right. great things that his mother has done for him with this very small token, this the lanyard. And, and one last thing. What does he say about the lanyard that makes it even less valuable? How In he created it? Yes. How did he create it? Like kind of mindlessly. Yes. And who had to help him? The and did, he said it was boring. He didn't even understand what he was using it for. <coughs> so his understanding of this gift, <coughs> it was a, it meant nothing. 
you think the mother appreciated it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which says even more about a mother, that a simple gift like this that a kid made, even though he had no idea what he was doing, <clears throat> means so much. It's a, it's a, what would you say the poem's about? Gratitude? It's about, yeah, it's about being gra grateful, but really it's about not being grateful. It's realizing how ungrateful we are. All right, so um, let's look for Thursday for the first 10 chapters. Please, if you're there, keep reading. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. we got several more books.